Hello and welcome to a very special Eiffel Presentations podcast. Actually, this is more of a multicast presentation, as you could be listening to this in a variety of ways. Perhaps in your car as an MP3 podcast, watching on YouTube as video, or maybe even from our website as a flash file, or even a PowerPoint file. Eiffel's very own Simon Morton now explains just how you can and why you should repurpose your PowerPoint presentation into a number of ways. This is a short version of a presentation delivered to the Royal Institute of British Architects on the missed opportunity presented by PowerPoint and ultimately looking at how PowerPoint presentations can be repurposed to get more out of the time, the blood, the sweat and the tears invested in their creation. Very quickly, let me explain who I4 presentations are. We've been around for just over five years now working across the world in helping people address one of the biggest challenges facing businesses today, which is the quality and the execution of strong presentation materials. Over the last 12 months, we've delivered over 18,000 PowerPoint slides. And by that, we mean that we've taken them. We've often removed bullet points. We've certainly got rid of clip art and bad animation and transitions and developed these into strong, powerful and impactful slides for a range of business customers. Our approach to developing a presentation differs very much from the day-to-day user of PowerPoint and other presentation technologies. Typically, when asked to create a presentation, many users will immediately start thinking about how it's going to be designed. What's the look and feel of it? What template should it be sitting on? What colors can I get away with? How many bullet points can I squeeze onto one slide and what have you? And focus very much on the design, the look and feel of the presentation. Ideally, they'll be thinking about the content of the presentation. What information do they need to share with their audience? But interestingly, that often comes a a poor second to the look and feel and animation side of a PowerPoint deck. But very important is the content, the need to know. What often is missing is the message part of the presentation. And actually, we believe this is the most important part of the whole thing. Once you understand your key message, then the content and ultimately the look and feel can be delivered and created very much in line with that message. If you don't get the message right or you're not clear on the message, then everything else around it is just fluff. And that's where Eiffel come in. We work with our clients in not only understanding more about their message and helping them to define that key message for that presentation, but once we then have that, then working with them on developing content that's useful, concise, and impactful, and then wrapping that up in a way that, again, visually supports the presenter in sharing that information out with the client. So that's who we are, and we do it for a number of very large clients. We also work with some very small clients as well, you know, sort of one- and two-man bands. Here are some of the big names that we've worked with, but as you can imagine, sort of pretty much anybody in the B2B space tends to use PowerPoint or Keynote or one of the other presentation technologies at some point, and, uh, and thankfully we're in a position where people will come to us on a regular basis looking for that support and that guidance. But the purpose of this presentation is actually to just take a step back from the day-to-day running of our business and look at how presentations are being used. And I have to say, it's not all good news. A huge amount of investment goes into the creation of a presentation. You've got the people element, getting people together to pull together the information that either content-wise or from ideally a key message perspective, Pulling all of those people together is a very expensive process and, if not delivered correctly, actually can be a huge waste of resource. Once you've got the people together, then you need to collect the data, the the content that ultimately will sort of fuel your presentation. And that can come through questionnaires, it can come through charts and umpteen spreadsheets, it can be going onto the World Wide Web, it can be anecdotal, it can be a whole bunch of stuff. Once you've got that content, you then have to shuffle it around. You need to structure it and ensure that your message, which sits at the core of your presentation, is being supported through this content. And again, a very time-consuming process. Once you have all of that content together, then you can finally engage on the design process. And that may be done in-house or it might be done through a third party. But again, obviously, there's a cost attributed to that. 
and the final process is actually getting approval. Now, if you're producing a CPD presentation, for example, as many Royal Institute of British Architects audience members were, then there's an approval process for that. But there may also be an internal approval process, which again is another investment in time and money and may actually start the whole process again. The end result of all of that investment is a dead end in many cases. It's one PowerPoint presentation. It's a deck of slides, and that's your lot. And whilst we love PowerPoints and think as a piece of software, it's an incredibly powerful tool in the right hands, that's a lot of investment just to end up with one deck of slides. And whilst PowerPoint comes in for a lot of stick by a lot of people on a very regular basis, there are some elements that we just can't get away from. Delivering a PowerPoint presentation is pretty intensive. You need, ideally, somebody to drive this thing and let it run. Or if you send it through as an email attachment, are they actually being read? Are they being opened? Are you able to track and answer any questions that spring off the back of it? And is it the right sort of presentation? Are you sending it through as a hard copy? And if that's the case, are they reading, reviewing and retaining the right information? Or should it be a more interactive type presentation? It's very, very difficult to know. It's not all bad news, though. We do have some good news. There are a number of options. We're fortunate enough to work with a chap called Paul Avins, who's a well-respected business writer, presenter, and business coach. And he's identified that actually there are four types of content that businesses create. You've got conversion content. It's the most obvious type that's out there. It's content created to help convert a prospect into a customer. We're all aware of that. Many of the sales presentations that we sit through are conversion content. Not necessarily the most creative or compelling, but they're certainly designed to help the salesperson sell. But before all of that, you also have free content, content that you push out there completely free of charge to position yourselves as the experts in your chosen market. That then links into connection content, content that allows you to start building a connection with your suspects and ultimately turning them into prospects. And finally, once you've won them as a customer, then it's providing content that allows you to build a relationship time and time again. If we take ourselves as an example, purely because we're very close to it and we've uh, a number of uh, uh, pictures that we can show you to help demonstrate this, we, we actually tick all of these boxes. Our free content is out there for the world to see. We have white papers out there. We have a YouTube channel. The website is full of free information, full of content that is valuable to anybody that's interested in presentations. That's then supported with tweets and newsletters and podcasts and what have you. Our connection content goes a little bit deeper than that. And our people are part of that connection. They will go out there and they will speak at events. They will share our knowledge completely free of charge with people that, that are showing an interest. Add to that some of the other content that sits on the website, some of the content that we, we share on our blog, some of the content that we share through podcasts. And you can understand that actually people need to subscribe to some of this information. They need to have demonstrated an interest and we're then servicing that interest. That's good, strong connection content. And much of our new business is actually born out of this. To get to that new business, we need to convert prospects to customers. And we do that through a whole bunch of things by creating a strong and compelling proposal document with multimedia content in it and what have you. Testimonials on our website and on our blog where clients are saying, actually, this was a very, very good exercise for us to go through. Our people, again, case studies. There are a whole bunch of different bits and pieces of content that we've created that we try and spin out in lots of different ways. And finally, the relationship content that we build. And this is where we tend to have a bit of fun, where we'll try and do a few different things. We have our Eiffel mugs, which is where our clients will happily pose with an Eiffel mug. And, uh, and then we then stick them onto our mugshots wall on the office. Again, it's a bit of fun, but actually, yeah, we have a bit of free advertising sitting on our client's desk. Every time they take a sip of coffee or tea, they'll hopefully reflect on the work that they've done with us. So that's our message, but let's take a real life example. Let's think of how we've taken content and repurposed it in lots of different ways. This is a key slide for us. As we've explained before, many people think about design, but actually content is an incredibly important part of the presentation. The whole thing is flawed and is built on sand if it's not delivered with a key message very much in mind. That's what we were about. We were about bringing all of those elements together. And that's the Eiffel message. It's a nice, very simple way of explaining what we do. 
What we've done is with that one slide, which didn't take particularly long to pull together, we've tried to spin that out in lots of different ways. You go to our website now and you'll see a flash version of exactly the same presentation with a voiceover sharing that information. So that's one piece of collateral, the web presentation. We've also converted that to a YouTube video, which is accessed again to anybody that, that shows an interest in the Eiffel Presentations YouTube channel. And to date, we've had hundreds of people visit that one particular page just to hear our story, again, from that one piece of collateral. We then stick it into our proposal documents. So rather than just bombarding people with lots and lots of text, we also then allow them to click on the video that's embedded within our PDF document to allow them to hear our story pretty much firsthand. And we've created a podcast that, again, can be accessed from the Apple iTunes store as well as our own website and a range of others that, again, is spinning out exactly the same message and sharing our vision for how presentations can be created. We think that's a pretty good return on investment from one presentation creating a whole range of different pieces of collateral. So if we go back to the investment that we made, yes, we pulled people in to share the ideas. We collected the data. We had to structure the message. We had to get the design right. And we had to make sure that customers understood our message as we were pulling this thing together. But once we'd done that, our hard work had actually been recognized. And then we just span it off in lots and lots of different options. Video, web presentation, multimedia PDF, and podcasts. So what we'd strongly suggest is that you think outside of it being purely a PowerPoint deck. Think about how you can use some of that content in a range of different ways, from free content that you give away as a way to demonstrate your position in the market, all the way through to conversion content and ultimately relationship content. A lot of the hard work you've done needs to be repurposed, and it's a very simple and easy process to do. So there you go, we've flown through that, what was actually an hour's presentation to the Royal Institute of British Architects. But hopefully it goes to demonstrate there are a number of different options that can be spun out from that basic PowerPoint deck that you've created. To learn more about how Eiffel can help your business achieve that wow factor, visit www.eiffelpresentations.co.uk or simply call us on 0845 056 8528. That's 0845 056 8528.